Oh no. <laughs> please, please, please give me a red land. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code ITRESOLVES10YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing exceptionally well. I believe this video is going up on Friday, so I hope you have a good start to your weekend today. Uh, hopefully finishing off the week strong and uh, yeah, we're going to jump into this deck. Before we do that, I just want to remind you, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. It's a great way to support us. It also enters you for all future giveaways, including the one we have going on right now uh, for a draft booster of Kamigawa Neon Dynasty that's going to be given away on February 23rd. So I highly encourage you to check that out. Uh, details can be found in the video on our homepage on YouTube or or on our website at itresolvesmtg.com. So please do check out all the details there. There are multiple ways to enter. Subscribing is just one of them. Uh, but it's going to be awesome. Guys, let's talk about today's deck. This is the Bard class deck, but Obviously, one of the big new cards in the set is Mirror Box, and this, to me, was the most obvious place that this this card just slots right into. <clears throat> Obviously, we're already focused on legendary creatures, uh, and so what's nice about that is the Mirror Box really, really kind of smooths that out even more. So if we don't have the Bard class, uh, it actually really helps us because we can just continuously play multiple legends with our Mirror Box. We don't get cards clogged up in the hand. Uh, it really, you know, pumps up the board as well. It just kind of does everything we need. Uh, now that Bard class is still in here, obviously. Legendary creatures you control enter the battlefield with an additional 1-1 counter on them. We'll talk about that synergy in a second because there are some things that I'm playing around with here that I think will be good. Uh, legendary spells you cast cost a, bl uh, uh, excuse me, a red and a green less to cost, to cast. I it's hard to say. Uh, <laughs> The effect reduces only the amount of colored mana that you pay, which is helpful. And then uh, for that level three, whenever you cast a legendary spell, exile the top two cards of your deck, you can play them this turn. So again, continuously kind of giving us more options as we go along here. Now, crucially, there are a couple new cards in here that I'd like to talk about other than the mirror box. The first one, Goro Goro, uh, Disciple of Ryosi. Oh, Ryusi, whatever. Uh, creatures you control gain haste until the end of the turn if you pay a red. That's huge. That is a very, very aggressive way to, uh, to, to run this deck. And so my hope is that we can get this down early and then just sort of haste out everything from there. Uh, now, late game, we can spit out some dragons, which is kind of awesome. Uh, but you, can, uh, you activate only if you control an attacking modified creature. Well, thankfully, again, that Bard class is throwing counters on every legendary creature, which is basically our entire deck. Uh, and so it actually really makes it easy to do that. Now, another modified creature here, Kadama of the West Tree. This really benefits from uh, the modified stuff that we're going to be hopefully getting with that Bard class. Uh, modified creatures you control have trample, so obviously we can kind of continuously push through for some damage, but on top of that, whenever they deal combat damage to a player, you search your deck for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle. Now, that does two things. Obviously, one, it just basically ramps us. We've got quite a lot of basic lands, a full 11, uh, and so it should be a, a way to continuously ramp us, but on top of that, um, it's also a way to deck thin. Uh, and so as we thin our deck out, the chances of us drawing something that is a little bit more impactful to the board is very, very possible. Uh, now we do have a Sika here. This is also gonna help ramp us. We do have a single world tree. Uh, don't know that we'll actually get there, but I do think, you know, it's possible for sure. Um, we've got some card draw off of the uh, werewolf here, of course. Uh, some treasure token and ramp off of the brazen outlaw. We've got Helena and Alin. Halana and Elena partners, uh, whatever. They're going to throw some 1-1 counters around again, getting the uh, the modified mechanic going. Arlen is in here. We do have Sarath. Uh, this was, again, I one thing I should mention, I did start with a base list here that was actually a Jund list uh, from MTG Arena original decks, and I kind of modified it to what I thought might be good. Kind of smoothed it out a little bit to make it just Gruul because I felt like the Jund was... 
not necessarily needed. I didn't feel that the black had to be in there. And so I'm just testing this out. This is my own version based on that list though. So I, I should point that out. But Seraph is a really interesting one that was not in the original list because it provides protection for your creatures. It also gives death touch to your creatures. And we did add in some of the things like the Crucible of Defiance uh, that can spit out a couple little 1-1 one -one tokens that if they're attacking in have death touch. And so they can start trading up. Uh, which I think is really important for us here. Uh, we do, of course, have Kulvori, uh, God of Kinship. I'm butchering these names, of course, uh, but very, very helpful card in this list. Uh, it not only gives us some longevity, but on the flip side can actually help us cast our cards as well. Uh, Kira the Boundless Sky is a, a card that I would like to, I, I want to test out here for a number of reasons. One, can search up three lands and put them into our hand. That can get the World Tree or it can get any of our tech pieces like uh, the Basuji who endures or the Crucible. And that actually really helps us out because now we can, you know, tech out our land slot a little bit more than was in the original list and hopefully pull those out. Worst case scenario, it just spits out a token, of course. And then we did get the uh, the two lands here. So the Symbiosis and the, the, the Smashing. Both of these are pretty good in my opinion. We probably won't use the, the Symbiosis very often, but the Smashing actually does hit quite a bit and we do ramp pretty well in this list and so my hope is we can get that going but all this to say guys i think this is going to be a really interesting list i'm excited to try this one out uh, i've only played one or two games with it so this is going to be a bit of a learning experience for me i have played the bard class deck before but uh not as much as i would like so we're gonna have some fun with it today guys hopefully get some wins uh and yeah just have a, a nice little fun friday so let's jump right in guys let's see how it goes all right guys and here we are for game number one this is about perfect for us we've got the bard class in hand we've even got the mirror box and the ring that we can play here so i definitely like this we would like to get an extra land or two here but again that kodama really helps us out and we can throw some counters around here as well so we should be okay here we'll see uh choose a creature type spin the spell. yeah all right so it really doesn't matter what creature type we choose here because again we can actually basically just play this for the legendary side. I just want to make sure I understood that as well as we could. We are against Wizard here, who seems to be mulliganing. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Pretty heavy mulliganing, too. Down to five. Uh, let's see what they end up going with. Okay. Uh, gonna be a tricky one, probably, but that's okay. Um, I think we will go ahead and play the ring. We do want to get this out here, uh, and it really doesn't matter what we go with. Um, I want to make sure what we can do is get some stuff down here that can either block or, you know, take care of whatever they're doing. If that means we have to take a hit from this Usher for a turn, I'm kind of okay with it. Now, that's interesting. I would have thought they would just, um, boast it. You know what I mean? But maybe they have another combat trick or something. I guess they give it Vigilance, which is pretty good, too. That's interesting. Very, very interesting. Okay. Um, well... With that in mind, we've got a couple of options for us. We can definitely just Bard Class and take a hit for the turn. Alternatively, we can Kodama. Um, but, you know, weirdly, I think while there's not a lot of pressure, we're going to try and Bard Class. Not super sold on this, um, this play, but I think the trick is we need to get that modified... Uh, of, basically we need to start throwing counters on stuff because if we can then we can really take advantage of kodama <clears throat> excuse me all right they're just gonna keep boasting up this uh usher which is interesting again i don't know that i think that's a great play but that's fine maybe they just don't have a lot either uh that's fine so if we get a land we can actually just throw this out which is quite good um alternatively and they still didn't boast it why did they not boast it Hmm. Fascinating. Okay, well, we're just going to throw this out. This gives first strike, uh, and it does come in with the extra counter on it, which is really nice. Um, and we'll see what happens. Maybe they have a, a flash spell. I can't really think of what they might have, to be honest. But crucially, again, this having first strike is very important because unless they've got another one of these homestead courages, uh, they might not be able to attack in here. Um, if they do attack, I think we take it. Because again, we can then Kodama next turn. Or we just block here. 
Uh, we can't. It doesn't actually attack. I'm going to take the block. If they've got a combat trick at this point, yeah, that's fine. We block a good bit of damage by doing that, so I'm kind of okay with it. All right, let's do this. Perfect. Um... Let's see. Really wish we could double up on some spells this turn, but it probably isn't going to work out that way. Uh, we could do this. All right, let's do this. This is going to cheapen up quite a bit. Um, and now we can actually double up, I suppose. So let's do this. Let's do this. And now all of a sudden we've got a much scarier board. So at the very least, we might be able to uh, draw some cards and hopefully get some get somewhere with this so this is a magecraft deck i was kind of curious because they do happen to have a lot of little combat tricks and things so just kind of interesting um i'm gonna do this i expect that they'll have some kind of combat trick whether they could deal 13 damage or not <laughs> not really sold uh they may just take the the trade here and then leave up combat tricks on a defensive note but looks like they're not going to i mean that's good ish um but i'm not really sold that that's the right call all right so we can do quite a bit here so let's do the mirror box play for sure uh let's throw arland out and we're gonna create the two wolves uh, and crucially, these are just going to be blockers for us, essentially. Uh, but what we can now do is start attacking in with these things, which is very important for us because we need to start getting some damage in. And again, these have trample, and whenever they deal combat damage, we get lands. So, And this one draws a card. So we might actually have a good bit of, uh, of triggers here, which is pretty helpful. And again, if we happen to draw like another legend, we can potentially play it just off of the ring. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of the fun part about this is you cheapen so much up uh, that it makes it really possible. Okay, they're gonna untap this. That's good. Uh, they can kill the Kodama. We do still get some triggers though, which is helpful. Uh, so we'll just get a green source and then we'll draw a card. And there's another Arlen. Okay. So now, no matter what they do, we block both creatures if we can. Um, crucially, if they have this and can give some, something flying, that's going to be a problem for us. But other than that, we're in okay shape here. So I'm kind of okay with it. Yeah, cool. So we are going to get the opportunity to block, which I will happily take. Uh, we're just not going to worry about it. Seems pretty straightforward. All right. They kill both of our tokens. That's fine. Again, we're not really worried too much about that. Uh, interesting. Hmm. Well, we have some options here. Uh, the first thing is obviously just going to be to do this. I think that that's just the right play. Um, I do think we attack in here just to draw a card. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, we'll see if they block. If they do, that's fine. It's not the end of the world. They've got one card left. What could that one card be? Very curious. If they have a, a spell to get rid of the uh, the werewolf here, I wouldn't be surprised, but it looks like they don't. All right, let's draw a card. Land. Uh, that's actually not unhelpful. <laughs> um, let's do this. Let's do this. That's gonna exile the top two so we can start to kind of chain some things here, theoretically. Although we did not draw anything useful. That's a little unfortunate. Um, and here, I think what we're gonna end up doing is Arlen, uh, and then minus three just to get two more little guys out here. I think that that's probably the right call because we do need the blockers. Um, and we can obviously keep both of these on the field now, thanks to all of this. So we do lose those cards. That's a little unfortunate. But again, we've got a pretty solid board state at this point. Um, and next turn, we are so well set up. But I think it'll be okay. Yeah, I think we just... Uh, no reason not to block like this, really. 
Um, they do have some cards in hand, so I fully expect that they might have a combat trick, given this is a Magecraft deck. Um, but it's kind of okay. Sure. So we actually do trade off uh, with the Usher, which is kind of big for us. Um, didn't really expect us to do that, but that's fine. All right. Uh, well... see what happens so we'll do this we'll let them block this does have tr oh no it does not have trample i'm sorry my mistake um that's fine so we do this we do this and now these two flip uh which is very helpful for us and hopefully yeah all right cool we got there that was a little bit of a risky attack i was kind of seeing if they'd be they would just kind of let it go through um but it worked out for us that was awesome guys let's jump into game two all right guys here we are for game number two and uh yeah i mean this is a pretty easy keep we've got both of the outlaws here uh with the ring so we should be able to get somewhere with this we'll see what we find ourselves up against of course but we'll lead on the uh the veil since we can produce both colors of mana off of it uh go here and I think we just go for the outlaw. Uh, if they have a kill spell, they have a kill spell. We've got another one, but this this provides us with treasure tokens, which is obviously just in general very helpful. Uh, and so we'll see what we can do. They are going to be on the venture deck, which is a scary deck to be against, but uh, we'll we'll see what we can do. <laughs> so what can we do this upcoming turn? So we can attack in, uh, which we might as well. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> That changes the math. Uh, that's fine, though. We may struggle against this list. They do have a good bit of, like, mono-colored removal and things. Yeah, so they've got the Blood Chiefs there to deal with the Outlaw. Uh, the only good news is they're kind of they're kind of spending all of what they've got, which is helpful for us. So I think what we do is set ourselves up for the best possible... Uh, we'll just choose Goblin. It doesn't matter. We'll get the Outlaw down. Um, we can kind of double up here, and that gives us the Kira the, the, on the upcoming turn, which is quite helpful because, again, we can start getting the lands that we'd like out of it. Um, we get minus two, minus or down to minus two, one. That's kind of a, a frustrating number. Um, all right, so we take a good bit of damage here. Kind of sucks, but we'll see what we can do. This thing is really annoying because it does have that first strike. And it's very, very difficult for us to really get somewhere against that. Okay. So, we definitely throw this down. Uh, that guarantees that we can do this. And I think we just pass. Again, not a lot we can do aside from pass at this point. Uh, eventually, we could get the Prismatic Bridge down, but I think we're going to be a little too late for that unfortunately so they are going to attack with both here i think we kind of have to kill this with the kira i think we just have to um the problem is this is a lot of damage but it's also continuously going to loop for them we really don't want to give them that opportunity so the question is now which way do we go um I think we go this route but it might be incorrect all right so let's definitely get you let's get you and let's get you so we do get all of our tech lands here which is kind of helpful because we can stall with the crucible depending on what they need uh or what they hit we could hit something with the uh the suji whatever um <laughs> and we'll see what we end up doing all right so We can do this uh yeah i mean i think that that's we do want to get this down um we can play the gora gora but that's not really helpful alternatively we can just play this when that dies you venture into the dungeon hmm. we could also just play this um hmm i'm gonna do this uh wish we could like on 
whenever we need to uh tap that but we just can't and then what we can do let's let's do this so it's gonna get death touch which is important um they're gonna trade off which is fine and then we're just gonna do this while we still have the two so this is gonna give us a couple extra tokens here which is important and we get their 5-4 off the battlefield um and have two little blockers here not amazing i know but at least it's something all right so they are going to venture into the dungeon again scry two to the top that's pretty big um all right we'll just block here just to save ourselves the two i think we do kind of have to be careful about our life total here Okay. Don't love it, but it is what it is. Alright, so now everything can tap for any color, which is helpful. I'm gonna go for the prismatic bridge here. Um, may not be amazing, I know, but it's something. <laughs> uh, and we'll just play the Goro Goro out. Alright, we're shields up for a turn until we can hit something off of this bridge. I really don't know what we could hit. <laughs> um, probably nothing, but we gotta try, I think. Um, yeah, they're going to attack with everything. Makes complete sense. Um, the death touch on this is so frustrating. And they get so many ventures at this point. It's ridiculous. Okay. So they're going to destroy some stuff. They have to tap a lot for that, though, which is kind of nice. Uh, but now we are pretty close to dead. We can trade here. We can block here. Two, five, six, seven. All right. I think we do that. It's not great. I know. But we got to do something. <laughs> All right. Ooh, what a rough one. What a really, really rough one. Oh, no. We just... <laughs> that's not very helpful. Um, All right. We'll play the land. We'll play the mirror box. And we'll play this. That's all we can do. Um, so I think we're just dead. Right? Like, they just get to attack and... Yeah. Unfortunately, we just didn't have it there at all. They had such a good start. That's okay, guys. Let's jump into a game three. All right, guys. Here we are for game number three. Let's see if we can get a win off of this one. This is not a very good start, though. We've only got green mana available. Now, granted, these are both good cards. But I think I have to mulligan here. Oh, no. <laughs> all right uh well i don't really want to go down even further so i think we just keep it uh but we really need some mana here we do get to lead on the world tree which is nice um but yeah this is gonna be a bit of a tricky one definitely not a good start for us here if we draw a red land we might be okay uh we can go ahead and get that bard class down which would be really helpful all right that is not a red land. Uh, so unfortunately, we're just gonna have to go this route. Uh, it doesn't matter really what we pick here. Again, that's fine. Oh no. <laughs> please, please, please give me a red land. Anything, any red land. I don't even care if, I don't think we have a tapped red land, but give me something, please. Uh, the good news is the uh, Besiju or whatever can actually blow this up at some point if we need it to. That's kind of nice. Oh no. Oh no. Guys, I hate when this happens. This feels so bad. You know, it, it's one of those things where I know a lot of people complain about uh, the shuffler and, you know, how terrible it is and all this. And you're not wrong, clearly. But the trick is it's bad for everybody. And, like, you can complain all you want. And I'm sorry. I know it sucks. It sucks right now. I hate recording content when this happens. But it happens like you can't really just get get pissed off about it you know what i mean like it sucks but it sucks all the time it's fine all right uh yep all right we're gonna concede and jump into another game because we're super dead there that was oh it was so bad all right we'll jump into one more 
all right guys here we are this will be our final game and yeah this is definitely a keep here uh we've got all the colors of mana that we need <laughs> which is pretty important uh but we also have the bard class we have a Sikia, uh or a Sika, and then we also have kira so well this is a, a pretty strong hand in my opinion granted that's not great for us we are against goblins it looks like so we might have a hard time but we'll do what we can we are going to want to get creatures down as quickly as possible just to be able to block here, I think. Uh, and then that mirror box can come down a little bit later. So we'll see how this ends up going. Um, curious to see. They did not have... Oh, they have a battle cry. Okay. I was about to say, like, why didn't you play something? Um, all right. So again, the cool thing about this is what we can do is do this, level it up, and then play the Tovalar. That just cheapens up all future spells, but we didn't lose out on anything. Uh, this really allows for really awesome plays like that, and that cheapens up the rest of our hands, so we can even play the Kira next turn if we'd like. Um, all right, they've got a Thundering Rebuke. That's annoying, but fine. Um, they're going to get in for some damage here, of course. But uh, again, with everything being cheapened up as it is, we might have a chance here. Sure. Double mirror box. Um, all right. Well, we definitely just play this out. Not really anything else to do here. We just need to kind of be able to block as best we can. If they've got a burn spell, it's going to suck. But, like, we got to do it. And then we can just throw the XX, uh, well, in this case, 4-4 down to uh, hopefully get something on the field just to block again. <clears throat> All right, they have a land. So they can mix an attack in with a burn spell. I feel like if they do attack, they probably do have a burn spell. They're going to preemptively Thundering Rebuke. That's a little odd. Okay, I was going to say, unless they're doubling up on it, that feels really odd. Uh, let's go ahead and get that 4-4 out. That's just going to hopefully stall out um, as best we can. And it does. That's helpful. Uh, all right. So, let's do this. I think we go this route first. Uh, again, just to be able to block here as long as possible. They could start to battle cry Shaman just to get some, some power out here. But I think this is going to at least help us out a good bit. We can trade off here. So, the trick is, yeah, they get, they get a bunch of power on the field. But we still get to uh, kind of trade off and do some stuff like that so I'm cool with it I think we just trade like this and take the eight these are temporary buffs so I'm not really as worried about them um there's that so now we've got mana of any color which is helpful let's do this oh all right they good gamed us all right we did it <laughs> Heck yeah, that was very, very quick. All right, let's talk about this deck. All right, so first things first. Again, as I said in the in the top of this video, this was based on a deck by MTG Arena Original Decks um, that was a Jund build. And I think you can definitely build this in Jund. I think you can definitely go a multitude of different ways with this. There are obviously quite an assortment of uh, legendary creatures now. And so it is very, very possible to kind of push this in multiple different directions. I like the Gruul version. It seems more efficient on mana, despite that third game, uh, where you're not really having to worry about the colors as often or, you know, making sure you hit the land drops. You've kind of always got the stuff you need. Uh, again, except for in that game three. Uh, but all that to say, um, I really enjoyed the deck. I think we got unlucky in that third game. And I think against the Adventures deck, or the Venture deck, excuse me, we were going to struggle. I mean, they had a very strong start, and that Death Toucher right off the bat is just one of the most difficult things to deal with in a deck where removal is not very heavy. We don't have a lot. We've got Shatter Skull Smashing. That's about it. Now, that's a very easy card to deal with it, but we only have it as a one of. And so I would suggest that in this deck, the goal isn't to be removing the opponent's threats. It's really just to be throwing out more and more of your own to kind of pressure them. And unfortunately, they just got to it quicker. I, I mean, that that's just how it works. I think that's something that you have to consider with, with playing a deck like this. I would not suggest putting a lot of removal in this list because, again, then you're not 
<clears throat> excuse me, capitalizing on the legendary creatures that you could be playing. Uh, so just, you know, some things to think about. You can certainly try it, but I don't necessarily recommend it. Uh, all that to say, I do think this is a good deck. I do think um, Mirror Box is on point I, it's just so good in these legends decks it's it's ridiculous so absolutely love this one i hope you guys enjoyed this again leave a like leave a comment down below make sure you're subscribed so you can enter that giveaway and hopefully you'll hang out with us again with some more gameplay videos we've got some more obviously going up every single day uh and we're trying to stick to that it's been over a month now so it's going well but i really appreciate it guys thank you so much we'll see you again very soon